believe God. By the way of introduction, to put this declaration that the Apostle Paul made that morning in its context show, will show you how extraordinary this declaration was. The context, the environment, the circumstances was nothing like uh, that, that you're in, that we're in, when we uttered the same words, when we said, I believe God. Um, the people to whom Paul spoke this particular declaration of faith too, were not like the people, God bless you Coach Stewart, was not like the people to whom I am speaking this declaration to. The men to whom he made this declaration were weather beaten, cold, hungry, seasick, sick, scared, Scared beyond their wits. Their cargo was gone. So that means if they did arrive safely, nobody would get paid. The ship they were sailing in had been damaged greatly. And according to verse 20, their mental state was the worst that a human, beings, human being can be in. The Bible teaches that all hope that they would be saved was taken away. The worst position that a human being can be in is to be hopeless. When you are hopeless, you have nothing to live for. When, you have, when you're hopeless, you have nothing to fight for. Nothing. The worst state for a human being is to be in a hopeless state. They were hopeless. And Paul says to these hopeless people, and when you're hopeless, you're also filled with pessimism. There are no optimistic, hopeless people. When you when you when you're engulfed in hopelessness, you are by definition pessimistic. You have nothing to be excited about, uh, no reason to fight, no reason to be upbeat, no reason to have a good attitude, uh, no reason to be cheerful, for you have no hope. Hopeless people are um, people who are next door to being dead people. These people were hopeless. Did I mention that they were weather beaten and hungry? And they'd been tossed to and fro. And the most experienced sailor, after being tossed one time too many, gets seasick, vomiting everywhere, all kinds of problems. And he says to these hopeless men, Brother Sawyer, in fact, he tells these hopeless guys twice to be of good cheer. Can you believe that? In verse 22, he tells them, I exhort you, and now I exhort you, be of good cheer. In verse 25, the A clause, he says, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. He challenges the obvious presence of hopelessness and pessimism with faith in God, which produces optimism. You can't have faith in God 
and not be optimistic. For faith in God gives one optimism. It gives one hope. It gives one a reason to be cheery. It appears that Paul understood that uh, uh, the atmosphere, the attitude of the men needed to change. Amen. And he says to them, the reason he gives for challenging uh, this the hopeless state that they were in, he says simply this, not that I am a meteorologist, I don't know when this storm is going to end. I am not a ship's captain. I am not an experienced sailor. I am not an expert in any of these things. I don't know how long this trial will last. All I know is that an angel of the Lord visited me last night. And he told me that I was going to live to appear before Nero Caesar. And he told me that everybody on this ship would live also. So based on a dream that I had last night, I want to tell every one of you to be of good cheer. For I believe God. And I believe that is going to be just like he told me. Although I don't see the sun. Although it is still raining. And the ship is greatly damaged. And nothing has changed in the real world since my vision. I still believe. That's why I left that. That's why I left that conjunction in there. For I believe God. See, he's not believing God in the face of everything looking like it's going his way. He's believing God despite what reality is saying. See, anybody can believe God after the sun comes out. Paul says, in the midst of it all. For I believe God. All of life comes down to that. Who are we going to believe? Can I talk to you, Upper Room? Heaven and hell swings in the balance of whether we believe God. The question is. Who or what today are we going to believe? Sin entered into the world because Adam and Eve believed the serpent and not God. Isn't it amazing? Everything boiled down to just one word. Mother Harris, one word. One word. Everybody say one word. One word. One word. Just one word. One word changed everything. God said in Genesis 2 and verse 17, the B clause, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt surely die. God said that. Am I right about it? The serpent said in Genesis 3 and 4, the last clause, you shall not surely die. The difference was one word. Not. God said, thou shalt surely die. The devil said, thou shalt not surely die. One word. Now, 
at, at, at that time, it boils down to who they would believe. Even though there was only a single word between what God said and what Satan said, the health, happiness, and holiness of all humanity hinged upon what Adam and Eve would believe. Even on the issue of our very existence. Who do we believe? Moses or Darwin? Did God make man in his own image? Or did man evolve from an amoeba, from a monkey, from a primate? Both can't be true. Hallelujah. Did God make the world? Or did nothing explode, as the Big Bang Theory suggests? And became a complicated, systemized, precise universe. Who do you believe? On the issue of marriage, is it a union between a man and a woman? As the God of the Bible clearly states that it is. Or can men marry men? And women marry women, as the U.S. Supreme Court and the leftists have said. Who will you believe? On the issue of life, is the unborn sacred, as the Bible clearly teaches? Or is it a woman's right to choose whether or not to give to let that life in her live. Who do you believe? Even on the issue of our sex, our genders, the Bible says that God made them male and female. If that be the case, then can that be a transgender. That can be a freak, but can there be a third gender when God only made two? The question is, who do you believe? I'm going to preach after a while. On the issue of work, should an able-bodied, should able-bodied people be paid not to work? Or do we believe, as the scripture have says, if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat? 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. Do we, who do we believe? The prophet Isaiah asks, who hath believed our report? Isaiah 5, 53 and 1. Even after Jesus had performed many miracles, many people still during his earthly sojourn did not believe on him, which was the fulfillment of what the prophet Isaiah asked. Over 740 years before Christ came, Isaiah asked, who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Jesus, 740 years later, well into his earthly ministry, quotes Isaiah in John chapter 12, verse 38, and he says, Lord, who hath believed our report? Jesus says, I performed all kinds of miracles, and many of you still won't believe on me. The Lord says, Isaiah was right. And then the apostle Paul in the spring of A.D. 56, 56 years after our Lord had died and ascended to heaven, 56 years later, the apostle writes a letter to the Romans. And he says, he asks this question. They, he says, they have not all obeyed the gospel. 
For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? The question today is, what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? Oh, I think it's been a wonderfully successful campaign that Satan has launched to get people to doubt God. To get people to distrust the Lord. I selected these particular subjects. There are many more. Because here's how the human mind works. If you can't trust God or trust the Bible, in the weightier issues of life, then you most certainly won't trust it in the mundane issues. If we can't trust God with the definition of marriage, if we can't trust God with the, with the definition or the, the explanation of how we got here, we can't trust God with genders, whether it's male or female. We can't trust God, the Bible, with the definition of the, the sacredness of the unborn. When, 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 when the Bible, if, if, if the world, the devil can get you to trust, to distrust God in all of these areas, then what you are left with is a meaningless religion. Because the question becomes then, what do we trust him for? If you doubt him in major issues, you'll doubt him in everything. And this is something that Satan knows. So this is why there's this huge systematic campaign to get us to distrust the Lord. It all boils down to whether one believes the word of the Lord. In our text, the Apostle Paul was a prisoner in our text at this time. And the good thing is he was handed he was put into the hands of a kind centurion of Nero's band, Nero Augustus Caesar's band. And this kind, powerful centurion, a Gentile, name was Julius. They entered into a ship, the Adra Medium which was from Western Asia, near the island of Lesbos in the Aegean Sea. The Adra Midium was a small grained vessel, and it was designed to travel from there, from Caesarea there. And also Aristarchus was on this trip. So they left, according to Acts chapter 27, verse 1 and 2. The third verse tells us that they left Caesarea and sailed north. They went up to Sidon. Paul was allowed when they got to Sidon, as in Tyre and Sidon, Paul was allowed to get off the ship and visit some of his friends. And verse 3 tells us that some of his Christian friends up there refreshed him. You know, Paul had to be a first-class prisoner for them to give him that kind of latitude. Follow me now. The first sign of trouble kind of, we see it in verse 4 of our text, it says, and they sailed under, that is, along the northern coast of Cyprus. And here's the thing, because the winds were contrary. Are you following me? Contrary winds. They're out there sailing on this ship. The Adra Medium. And uh, verse 5 says they kept sailing. They sailed beyond Cilicia and Pamphylia and Myra and Lycia. They sailed. Lycia, excuse me. And when they got to verse 6, 
an interesting thing took place is that they changed ships. Bible teaches that they changed ships and they caught a ship. This ship was from Alexandria sailing to Italy. Alexandria, as you know, it was Alexandria, Egypt. Egypt is an African nation. So they switched and put Paul on a ship full of Africans. This was a larger ship. Having sailed from Alexandria, a huge enough ship built for the journey. And it was headed to Italy. They had roughly 500 miles or better to go. Sailing across the mighty Mediterranean. I want you to see this. Verse 7 tells us something else. It says that when they sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against Sindus. Now, the wind was still fighting them as they sailed west. A northwestern route would have been ideal, but the wind was blowing them off course. The winds blew from the north. They blew from the north, southeast, and they wanted to sail northwest. And then take a sharp northwesterly turn and sail up after they pass the island of Crete. But the wind was blowing. Wind was blowing. So when they get to the island of Crete, in the 8th verse, it says, And hardly passing it, came into a place which is called Fair Havens. Fair Haven was on the southern side of the island of Crete. And uh, they stopped uh, at Fair Havens and nigh unto uh, where unto was the city of Lycia. So all of this is on the island of Crete. So they've sailed and they're out in the Aegean. They've sailed past Cyprus and they're out uh, some ways on the island of Crete. Praise the Lord. Let me say this to you. The journey was being undertaken that they got on, being undertaken at the end of sailing season. So the ship ran into difficulty. Sailing was dangerous from mid-September to mid-November. The waterways were closed for travel from then until February. So from mid-November to February, all of the waterways were officially closed. It appears that Paul's journey occurred somewhere in mid-October. So for them to set sail between mid-September and mid-November, it was really a bad time to get out there. And uh, they quite possibly were the only ship out there in the midst of this, uh, this rough, these rough seas. Fair Havens was not a good place to spend the winter. Because the harbor was exposed to the open sea. So they get to Fair Haven, Haven, but Fair Haven is not a good place. Verse 9 says, And when much time was spent, and when sailing was now, look at this, dangerous, because the fast was now already past which lets us know the day of atonement that gives us our time between mid-October. said that with the atonement having passed, then Paul admonished them. Follow me now. 
and said unto them, and you know, Paul was very respectful, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. Paul says, I, I, I sense that we may need to stay here. Sir, I feel that if we get out there, much damage may come. Not only to the lading, the cargo, but to the ship itself. But not only to the ship, but we may get killed out there. All right? Verse 11 and 12 says, Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken of Paul. And because the uh, haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete. They lie toward the southwest and the northwest. What happened? Paul says, we shouldn't set sail here. I know this is slow. We shouldn't set sail. He didn't say God told me. He said, but I perceive that we shouldn't do this. But you know how it is. Often people trust experts science, and scholarship more than the voice of the servant of God. The centurion saw in Paul a prisoner. That's what he saw. And a missionary. But on the other hand, there was the ship's captain. He was a successful businessman. Owner of a large cargo ship. A seasoned sailor. And sailing was his expertise. So basically, he said to the preacher, stick to preaching. And I'm going to listen to the sailor. And if they say, sail on, then we are going to sail on. And that is exactly what happened. Praise the Lord. And everybody tells the preacher, stick to preaching. If we speak to politics, stick to preaching. We stick to we speak to sports, stick to preaching. The word of God get in your business. Then you say he stopped preaching and gone to meddling. Stick to preaching. And then when we if we buy stick to preaching, then they want to tell you don't preach it anywhere but in the four walls of your church. They're always trying to silence the preacher. Paul said, I don't think we ought to do it. But he was outvoted. And so they, uh, they sailed on. Now, the plan, here was the plan. The plan was uh, they felt that since Fair Havens on the Isle of Crete was not the best place because of its exposure to the rough seas during the winter, they felt like a district missionary, if they could sail to the northern end of the island of Crete. They didn't want to leave the island. If we could sail around some kind of way to the northern end and get to Phoenix, then still on Crete, uh, that would be a better place geographically to spend the winter. And so the, the idea is let's take the boat and sail in this ship, because they've changed ships, close to the shores of Crete, around and get to Phoenix, and we will, we will uh, drop anchor there. It sounds like a very good idea, except the man of God said, I perceive that we're going to have problems. 
if we get back out there in that water. They said, well, we're not going all the way to, to, to Italy. We're not trying to sell another 475 miles. We just want to sell about 40 miles. What's 40 miles? We want to sell 40 miles and go from one location on the island to another location on the island. So Paul was, praise the Lord, uh, his vote, uh, he was vetoed. They overruled the mighty apostle. And uh, now I tell you, just like the devil, it worked. It worked. The Bible says in verse 13, and when, look at this, and when the south winds blew softly. South winds, that is, winds coming from the south blowing up toward the island of Crete in the Mediterranean. See, now if you're sailing going northwest, South winds coming up, and you want to hug the shore, the south winds that are soft would help you hug the shore because the wind now is no longer contrary. It's a soft wind, and it's a soft south wind. That means the south winds were warmer winds and softer, and so they are sailing and uh, I can see, oh, you know, Julius was a good man. I can see the ship's captain saying, like I said, stick to preaching. This, this, this is what I know. This thing is in my wheelhouse. Uh, Paul said, well, I told you what God told me. And uh, it's just like the devil. The Bible said, and when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosening vents and sailed close by Crete, but yeah, it's these bats in life that can change a situation drastically uh, but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euroclad a nor'easter a nor'easter violently came up strong wind blowing from the north cold wind Violent winds. And these winds, see, the south, soft winds would help them hug the coastal creek. The north wind, the nor'easter, would blow against it. And guess what the nor'easter did? It blew them out to sea. Oh, there's the chalk shore. They, they were close to it. But this... North wind, Eurocloud, blew them out to sea. Oh, this kind of preaching is more for the serious Bible student. The rest of you, you just go and take a nap. You'll wake up when I hoop. I know how that works. He blew them out. And the Bible says in verse 15, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind. Oh, they got caught. They're doing everything. They're trying everything. And, but when they saw that they, they couldn't do it, the Bible says, we let her drive. Paul's sitting there saying, I told y'all being tossed to and fro the, this nor'easter driving the ship and there is nothing they can do now to control the thing and they see uh, they're being blown further and further off course that's the way life is you fail to listen to God disobedience worked for a minute disobedience is fun for a minute but I heard the Bible says sin when it is finished 
it bringeth forth death. See, it works for a minute, but when it's finished, you wish to God you've never seen it. They got out there, and the storm came up, and now, and uh, they're in trouble, and you know, this sudden change from the wind to a violent northeast, nor'easter was a common occurrence in those waters. Because remember now, the water channels, channels are closed. They shouldn't have been out there. So now they're in trouble. And while they were being blown away, while they're being blown, they blew some 23 miles, amen, toward uh, uh, the, the wind was blowing. They, they're blown out there. And there was a, just a little uh, let up in the storm. There was a little island close to Crete, some 23 miles, praise the Lord, called Clotter. And uh, while they were there, they were able, they got a little reprieve. Follow me now. And they were able to secure the ship a little bit. And they stood on the lee side of the uh, island and and on the lee side of the ship, that is the, st the, 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 the side of the ship opposite the way the wind was blowing. And they got just a little reprieve as they tried to fasten and strengthen the ship. But they knew that they were in trouble. Verse 17 says, and when they had taken up, that is when they had hoisted the anchor, they used helps, that is ropes, undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into quicksands and lest they would be pushed up against the rocks and the breakers and lest the ship would sink in the marsh they they knew they couldn't stay there the bible said they struck sail and so were driven driven by the wind their lives are out of control. There is nothing that they can do. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest. You ought to watch some shows. I don't recommend you go to try to experience it. Talk to some of these experienced sailors. Oh, you can go up hundreds of feet and drop hundreds of feet. If not thousands. Walls of water all around you. Storms everywhere. Praise the Lord. Wind blowing. All kinds of dangers out there. The lightning flash and the dark sea lights up. And then the lightning goes out and it's dark. And you can't even see where you're going. The sea sounds like a hurricane. Sounds like a locomotive. And you realize that you're out there in all of that water. And there is nothing that you can do. They were tossed. And the next day, guess what? Guess what? They begin to throw away their money. Next day, they lightened the ship. Paul told them, you're going to lose your money. They began to throw away the grain, throw away their cargo. And then, uh, that was the next day, verse 19 says, and the third day, we cast it out with our own hands, the tackling of the ship. That is, they tore the ship apart. They began to take the furniture, tackling furniture of the ship. And throw it out. Trying to lighten the load. Trying to stay afloat. Oh yeah. And uh, when neither sun nor stars. In many days appear. And no small tempest. That means the storm continued to rage. And uh, the significance of no sun and no stars. Is that they couldn't navigate. They, they had no idea where they were. Oh, my, have you ever been in a situation in life where you can't navigate? You've lost your sense of direction. They didn't know where they were. All they knew were, we made it past Cyprus. We made it past Crete. And wherever we are now, we have no idea. And this storm just won't cease. Seemed to me this nor'easter is with us to stay. And then they finally got in a terrible place. The Bible said uh, that they lost all their hope. The Bible said that they came to the place where they said, well, we're not going to make this one. 
We're going to die. Praise the Lord. Because there is no way for us to be saved. They were at their wits end. Can I get a witness? They had gone as far as was humanly possible. And uh, this thing was too much for them. Too strong for them. The Bible says this about men who see God's power in the stormy sea. It says these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Psalms 107 and verse uh, 24, 25 says, For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy winds, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens. Those waves go up high. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel, talk about men, they reel to and fro and stagger like drunk men like a drunk man, and are at their wits in. When you're at your wits in, you don't know what to do. When you're at your wits in, everything you tried has failed. Oh, Lord, at your wits in, your, your B option and C option and down through Z has failed. The Bible said, then cry. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. I heard him say, he maketh uh, the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. And so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Isn't it good to know that God is able to deliver you, praise the Lord, no matter what. It's a good thing to know that men can get at their wits in, but there's no such thing as God's wits in. Mm -hmm. He waited until they tried every trick in the book. Oh, Lord, and when it seemed as though nothing would work, Paul had been fasting. Oh, Lord. And they're in trouble. Paul stood in the midst of them. Now keep in mind, the wind is still blowing. Lightning is still flashing. The ship is still being tossed and driven. Oh, Lord. And he said unto them, Sirs, you should have listened to me. Mm -hmm. and not have loose from Crete. We should have stayed there. I know that Fair Havens wasn't the best place, but sometimes there are no good options. You just have to settle with what you have. And God said, I, I told you that we needed to stay there and look at what we've suffered. We've suffered this harm and we've suffered this loss. He said, but I didn't come to just put you down. I have good news. He said, and now I exalt you to be of good cheer. The men thought he was crazy. Be of good cheer. For what reason? Why should we be of good cheer? We're about to die. Our money is gone. This ship is hanging on by a thread. What do you mean? Be of good cheer. Everything we see is bad. What do you mean? Be of good cheer. He said, the reason you need to be of good cheer is because for there shall be no loss to any man's life. He said, I'm here to tell you that every one of you are going to live through this. And then he told them something crazy. He said, the ship is going to be destroyed, but the Lord is going to save every one of us. Oh, Lord, that don't seem possible. If I'm out there in the middle of the Mediterranean, 
and I'm sailing on the Alexandria. Now you're telling me that the ship will be destroyed, but I'm going to be saved, and you want me to get happy. He said, let me tell you why you should get happy. He said, for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. Let me park here for a minute. I want to know how many servants of the Most High God do we have in here today? How many can say I belong to Jesus? He's my keeper. You see, when you are a servant of the Lord, servanthood has its privileges. Servanthood has its rights. I serve the Lord. So that means I'm God's responsibility. That means that he's got to take care of me. I put my life in his hands. Yes. Do you have you put your life in the hands of the Lord? Paul said, I'm out here tossed just like you are, but I know in whom I believe. How many know who you serve? I heard Job say, I know that my Redeemer lives, and even though skin worms eat up my flesh, he said, in my flesh, I'm going to see God, and I'll see him for myself and not for another. Oh, anybody here going through a hard time, but are you able to say in the midst of your trials, I know whom I serve. I know whom I believe in. I am the servant of the Lord. And the Lord is going to take care of me. Let me hear you say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. I wonder, is that a reason to be of good cheer? If that's a reason to be of good cheer, let me hear you praise the Lord in here today. Lift your hands and say to me, Preacher, this is going wrong. That is going wrong. Trouble over here. Trouble over there. But I have joy because I am the Lord's servant. Jesus is my king and he's going to take care of me. And he's going to keep me. And he's going to see me through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise him. I'm God's property. Get off me, devil. I'm God's property. Get back cancer, I'm God's property. Get back trouble, I'm God's property. I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a praiser, I'm a worshiper. I heard David say, good God Almighty, good God Almighty. He said that we are to trust the Lord, to make a joyful noise, to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Back their benefits that come with being a servant. One of the benefits is he heals all our diseases. Another benefit is he satisfies our mouth with good things. Another benefit is he watches over. Ah, he watches over us. You better praise him. Why are you praising him? You ought to shout, my heavenly father, my heavenly father, he watches.
watches over. He watches over. He watches over me. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Good cheer. Be of good cheer. Upper room, God told me to tell you to be of good cheer. Saints, the Lord told me to tell you to be of good cheer. Give him praise. Give him glory. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. He said, because the angel came to see me and told me, he said, fear not, Paul, for thou must appear before Caesar. And I got good news. God have given thee all of them that is with these. You know what? When I read this, I saw that this was a corporate blessing, a corporate deliverance, because there was a man of God on the ship. God says, I'm going to take care of everybody on the ship. I wonder, is there a child of God on your row? I wonder, is there a child of God sitting near you? If you can find one, one gives everybody a reason to praise the Lord. Yeah! Ah! Ah, Lord! If you can find somebody who has destiny, if you can find somebody who's on their way somewhere, ah, get with them. Ah, praise the Lord! Stay firm! Because when they go up, you are going up. When the Lord raised him up, he's going to raise you up. Yeah! 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 See, some people mess up because they let the devil call them to separate from somebody who has destiny. Woo! You left the church. You left somebody who's destined. You ought to grab somebody by the hand and say, I have destiny. You need to hang around. Oh, Lord. I'm on my way. Do I have a witness here? I'm on my way somewhere. And the devil can't stop me. The devil can't kill me. The devil can't block me. The storm can't drown me until I get to where God said I was going to go. So you ought to tell the devil to get out of my way. Get out of my face. Get out of my life. Get thee behind me, Satan, for I, I believe God. I believe God. I believe. Woo! If you believe you're headed somewhere, would you praise him for it? With all, with all that I preach and all that I've said, it don't matter if you don't believe. Lord, who have believed. It's not an issue of who have heard, but Lord, who have believed. Our report. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Oh my, believe. Believe. See, you let the devil get you out of place. Now, you, you'll never be what you could have been. But if you stay 
where God has planted you and stay till the time is right. You know what happened? After Paul said that and the men grabbed hold of faith, 14 days passed. No wind. No rain. Now they can't, it's a sailboat. Now they can't go anywhere. They went from one extreme to the other. And one night, while stuck, the crew decided we're going to take these dinghies, let them in the water, and we're going to sail off and leave this ship. And Paul and all the other prisoners, they're on their own. And Paul found out what the plan was. He, he, he didn't tell them not to do it. He just said, I just want to tell you, except you abide in the ship. You can leave if you want to. But except you abide in the ship, you will not be saved. You know what they did at that point? They let the dinghies go. They said, now, nah, Chris, that's your song. I'm committed. So now, now, they, they, now, you can't, you can't. It, it, there's no temptation to try to slip off on a dinghy because you don't have one. Now everybody is at the mercy of the law. And you know what happened? They arrived on the Isle of Malta safe because one man believed God and he was able to convince others to believe God. I don't know what the remainder of 2019 holds. I don't know what shall be in 2020. I have an idea of something, but I'm not God. Only God knows. But here's what I know. I know what the Bible says. I know the Bible is right. And I know that if I stick with this book, and I stay with the God of this book, and I stay connected with others who have destiny. See, you, you, tell, you tell your nephew that's why he messed up. You, you tell, you tell. talking about good things. Let me tell you. When you when you have destiny. Whew. See Paul said the Lord told him and this wasn't the first time the Lord told him you got to go before Caesar. Ain't nothing gonna stop you until you get there. And, and you have destiny on your side. This is why you shouldn't give up on your dreams. This is why you shouldn't give up on your religion. It's why you should believe the Bible. What, what do you mean? Uh, I, I don't know about church anymore. What, 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 what's wrong with you? What, what happened to you? I feel like hitting you. What do you mean? We serve a God who is a God who, who defeats the wind. He defeats the rain. He defeats the Eurocliders. He defeats the Nor'easters. When they looked like they were going to be thrown on jagged rocks. And that the little sh the, the ship was going to uh, break up like uh, match, uh, matches. God protected them. And the Lord told me to tell you. Going into the month of December. The Lord impressed upon me. To say to the people that I pastor. Tell them to believe. Believe. Believe him. Believe. Well, pastor, I believe. No, 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 no. Re-believe. Re-up. Rededicate. Reset. Set yourself again to believe God. Oh, 
though the devil have tried to take so many hits at our faith, and so many uh, salvos, and have dropped so many bombs trying to get Christians to disbelieve the Bible. But when the dust settles, the smoke clears, the saints stand believing. How do you believe? I believe like I believed yesterday. Leave and come back 20 years later, I'll still be believing. Yeah. Preaching it just as hard if the Lord be my strength. Somebody's in a storm. Come to the altar today. I'm here to tell you God's going to deliver you and set you where you need to be. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. God is able. Hallelujah. I believe God. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I just believe. I just believe. I just believe it. I believe everything in the Bible. I believe. I'm not doubting. I believe God. I believe God. God's definitions of things. I'm coming down on the God side of the argument. Hey! I understand science. And I understand scholarship. And I understand expertise. But I believe. I believe. I believe. And you know what? You know what? I'm not going to outsmart this book. Because see, some have grown uh, smarter than the Bible. Well, I know what the Bible says, but you know there are other books too. Really? Really? They're going to all take you to hell. This is the book of books. Father, we come. We lift our hands to you. We renew our faith. We recommit. We recommit to believing you. Believing the gospel. Believing the words of this book. We believe this more than we believe any pundit on the news, more than we believe any, any article, any magazine, any media outlet, any politician, any preacher, any entertainer, anyone, we put your word first. In fact, oh God, we believe your word above what we see with our eyes. What we hear with our ears. For they saw the storm. They heard death. They felt the rain. But you spoke deliverance. Oh God. Oh God. We repent for doubting. We repent for uh, the, the degree to which we have drifted away from your word. We repent for that. We used to believe that you were a healer. We believe it again, Lord. We used to believe that you were a way maker. We believe it again, Lord. Hallelujah. 
We used to believe, oh God, that nothing was impossible with you. Well, Lord, we believe it. We believe this again. We believe. We believe, Lord. We believe you. We believe that it shall be just as you said, regardless to how dire the circumstance. We believe you. We believe you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want somebody on the altar to just begin to ch chant. Just begin to chant and to say over and over and over, I believe God. 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 Come on, I believe God. I believe God. Say it until you feel it. Pray that prayer. Say it with authority. Say it with authority. Say it with power. Say it like you mean it. I believe God. I believe. I believe God. I believe Jesus. I believe the Bible. I believe biblical, biblical Christianity. I believe. I believe. I believe in. I believe in for my healing. I believe in the save the children. I believe him for a job. I believe him to remove that lump. I believe him to open a door for me. I believe him to give me joy. I believe him to restore my soul. I believe him to heal my body. I believe him to show me the way. I believe him through the storm and the rain. I believe him when it's raining, when the sun is shining, when the blow, when the wind is blowing hard, and when the wind isn't blowing at all. I believe, I believe, I believe God is gonna be like he said. It's gonna be like he said. It's gonna be what he said. It's gonna come out like he said. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The hand of God is against you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Somebody's getting a breakthrough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe, I believe. Let him touch you. Let him do it. Let him do it. Plow through every hesitation. Plow through every, every hesitation. Plow through every doubt. We come against every hindering spirit. We come against every, every voice of the devil that says you better, you better have some sense. Why you tell the devil it makes sense to believe God. The dumbest thing that I can do is to fail to believe God. Ah, believe God. Ah, I believe. I believe. I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at him praying on the altar. Look at him praying on the altar. Some of you out there in the audience, you ought to get your faith. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Call on him, young man. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. 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 Go work with him. Go work with that young man right there. Hallelujah, help him to get through. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I'm gonna close it in a minute, but you got just a few more minutes to get through to God, to get your blessing, to get your blessing. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I believe, I believe, I believe, I do believe, he's real, 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 oh, oh yeah, he's real, 
He's real. He's real. He's real. He's real. I can feel him in my soul. I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him in my mind. He's all over me. All in my hands. He's real. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah! 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 Woo! Yes, Jesus! Yes, Jesus! Yes, Jesus! Yes, Jesus! Yes, Jesus! Yes, 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 yes! Yes, 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 yes. People getting a breakthrough. People getting a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting revived. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. 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 He's mighty. He's mighty. He's real. I accept his healing. I accept his deliverance. I accept him. I accept him. I accept him. How many believe they got through the God? Lift your hand.